In this episode, as promised in the previous episode, I will be working on showing, explaining how you can set different options in a command, so in a slash command, all the different options for that, and also in an interaction reply. So there's a ton of things you can do with a chat input command interaction. One of them you can do is you can reply to it. So like here, standard reply. Another thing you can do is you can defer a reply. Well, let me just make a basic command real quick to show you exactly what I mean by defer and reply. Now, when you defer a reply, what that means is it'll wait longer. So you can see right here, it says it's syncing. That's how you defer a reply in essence. Another thing you can do is you can specify in here. You can specify that it's gonna be hidden, I guess you could say, or ephemeral whatever you prefer to say. And now it's uh, hidden from other people. I believe I could be wrong, but I think it waits for 15 minutes at most. The reason why you would defer a reply is if you don't, then you only have like five or 10 seconds or something like that to respond to it. So if you're doing something that's gonna like access a database and it's gonna take a few minutes possibly or 20 or 30 seconds to get a reply or make an image or whatever else you want to defer the reply first. Once you've deferred a reply, then you have to edit a reply. You can't reply once you defer to reply. That'll give you an error. So an example would be interaction dot edit reply. And now we can specify content to be hello. And we also need to await these so that we make sure they go in the right order, thanks to asynchronous. Now, if we defer again, it'll say it's thinking for a split second and then it will say hello. Super fast though, super fast. Anyway, now that it says hello, you could also just edit again. Um, there's also a fetch reply system where you can fetch this reply further down the line, say down here, and you got a bunch of code in here and you want to fetch the original reply and edit it accordingly. You could do that. It's dot fetch reply and it'll get, it'll get it right away. There's also a follow up. So after you've already replied to an, a, um, command, you could say, await interaction dot follow up and then you could say content hello again and you could also wait a little bit between sending the first and then this if you want that's up to you you can have a wait function all right now if i defer again Hello, and then hello again. Very basic proof of concept. When you do interaction.reply, there's a bunch of options. There's text-to-speech, which if you didn't know about text-to-speech, if you do slash TTS, or at least it used to be that way. Anyway, if you right click on a message and speak message that's text to speech and then there's also there's also ephemeral and fetch reply and so if you want to send a message and also fetch it at the same time then you can set that to true if you want but that's the basics for replying and following up and editing reply and deferring reply all right very basic the next thing you can do is let's make a bunch of options on this slash command.
bunch of the options that we can do is hmm the first example is you can add an attachment option so you know how there's like add user option add whatever else option right so we can put that down there uh so let's set or sorry add attachment option and then later you can fetch whatever was attached or you can add a boolean option so if you type an option after the dot you got all these different options you can use mentionable option which is channel mess uh, or not message channel role user anything like that that you can normally mention i believe i think i'm right <laughs> i could be wrong um you could add an integer option which is a number channel option boolean option string number i don't know what the difference between integer and number is i guess number can have a decimal place but integer can't technically uh and you can add user options and role options let's start with a string option because there's some different stuff you can do i don't want to get too in depth but i want to start with some different properties you can do so if you open this up you can set the max length or sorry set max length at max length let's say 10 so it can't be longer than 10 characters min length let's set it to three so that should be simple now if we deploy the commands oh whoops oh of course we got to set the name And we might also have to specify description. There we go. All right, it's called defer. String, set it to this, it has to be between three and 10 characters. Make it too long, doesn't work. Perfect length, it works. It's kind of odd that it didn't respond. Huh. It should have worked. Oh, right, because I didn't start up the bot again. Makes sense. Anyway. There's also a bunch of different stuff we can do. We can set it to required. This way, it'll automatically say that you gotta uh, put it in. What I mean by that is when you start to type in defer, it'll automatically put that in versus if you don't put it required, then it's gonna be an option you have to choose from. Like for example, when you do hello, you'll see here, you have to select it manually. That's why it's sometimes nice to do slash defer and you put in the characters, boom, good to go. Super simple. You can also set choices. This is very basic. I'm not going to go over the whole list of what you could, of how much stuff you can do. Well, there's a ton of different things you can do. Let's say, for example, name, hello. You also have to specify the value. Hello. You can specify name to be high, value to be high, and you can break this up if you want. Really should set it as a string, shouldn't I? <laughs> All right, there we go slash defer string doesn't have the choices 
guess I should update it. And now you get to choose between the two of these. <laughs> That's funny. Why did it correct to history, huh? I'm so confused. Anyway, that's interesting. I never saw that before. Anyway, it works, right? All right. I don't want to go too in depth into this right now. And for example, for numbers, you can set the maximum and the minimum value as well. So if you want it to be an integer and you want to be like, okay, maximum amount of players, you could have a maximum of 10, minimum of two. For an example, if you're going to like make a game pod or something. Uh, yeah. There's also a nice thing called default member permissions. Default member permissions. And I'm going to set it to administrator. Administrator. And what that means is you have to have the administrator permission in order to use this command. We can also set DM permission to false. What this means is now you can't use this command in DMs. What I mean by that is if you're to DM the bot normally, you can see all the commands. Oh, if they're, if they're global commands, sorry. If you publish them as a global command, make sure you set the DM to permissions to false unless you want people to be able to use the commands in DMs, which pr probably isn't what you want. But if you do, that's all right. Like the help command, obviously you want to leave DM permissions true, which is by default, so you don't have to touch that. Um, and yeah, I'll leave links to the documentation so you can go more into depth in multiple and all these different things and find what you need but these are some cool things that you can do and let's okay let's do a string option or in it a number option for fun add number option set max value and value is that required to true and no choices, no need for choices. What did I do? What on earth did I do? Okay, do it this way. Permissions flag permission flag bits dot administrator. I think that's what I screwed up on. Yeah, it's been a while. All right, do that and it should work. All right, slash defer, and it's only for administrators. So if I switch back over to my main point proven. Hello. And we'll set this to 100. And it's not going to work. It has to be between 3 and 10. So let's say 5. Boom, it works. And I'm not taking any of this data and using it again later right now. You could, just as normal as you normally would, where you get it from the options. That's completely up to you. But I think for now, that's all. This is a test on how to make a message that defers. It's ephemeral and has all these different fancy options. All right. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next episode. Bye for now. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Website with code for all the videos is now in the description. So it's great. You can go on there. You can look at the code snippets slash video section. And what that has is it has old videos and it has code snippets underneath. So it helps you compare your code. It doesn't have the code word for word as you go further into the series. 
but it definitely does have a good starting point and you can compare the core concepts to make sure you have exactly the right wording because sometimes case sensitive stuff is a real big, big pain in the butt. For starting out, I have this as an option. So make sure to check that out, like and subscribe for more, and see you all in the next episode. Bye for now.